Hey everyone, Shadow here, and today I'm going to show you how I create the thumbnails for the videos that I upload to YouTube when I create custom thumbnails. The thumbnail that we're going to work on today is the thumbnail that you're going to see for this series. I'm going to create one thumbnail and I'm going to use it for the entire series. That way I don't have to keep creating a new one for each video. All right, so all of the tools that I use, all the resources, the links will be in the description. So first off, let's fire up my graphic editing program, which is GIMP. GIMP is free. Again, the link will be in the description. And I am not a professional. So this is strictly amateur stuff, but I wanted to show you guys how easy this is. All right. So I've already customized GIMP a little bit, so you may see something different here. They'll have all of its tools. I limit it to only the ones that I tend to use most frequently. All right. So first, I'm going to create a new one. Now the width and the height, 1280 by 720. When I did some research on YouTube to find out what's the best dimensions for thumbnails, this came up. So all of my thumbnails, I create them with a 1280 by 720 resolution. All right, and I've already set my preferences, but you can change them here. All right, so you see color space. Well, we don't want grayscale. We want uh, RGB color. All right, and see here. Yep, yep. Now, here, the background color, I've set mine to black because that's what I've been using recently. However, you can change that to white or transparent background or just the foreground color, whatever it happens to be. Right now, the foreground color is white, so these would have the exact same effect. All right, and so we'll go ahead and click OK. So now we have a blank canvas to work with. Now, again, I'm not a graphic artist. So we're going to go to the Internet here. And I'm just going to do a search for editing clip art. And you can see I've done this before. And I'm going to go over here to my images and boom, I have a bunch of different images here. Now, because I'm going to be putting this on a background, I may want to limit this to just transparent. That way I don't have to worry about it clashing with my background. If I decide to change the background later on, I don't have to worry about having to deal with the image. All right. So since this series is about, you know, editing, you know, graphics and all that good stuff, I was looking for something with edit. And there's lots of ideas that you can uh, do just looking at some of this stuff. But I'm going to go with something simple. Okay. I like this one and I like this one. So I'm going to click on that. Click on it again. Right click. Save. And I have it set up. And this is the directory that I use. You'll recognize some of this uh, from some of my other videos. Okay. So I'll click save. All right. Close that out. Go back. Go get this one. Do the same thing. Okay, save it. All right. So that part is done. Now we need to bring those into GIMP. Very easy. You can just drag and drop it uh, off screen. I'm just going into my file browser and selecting them both, dragging them and dropping them. Okay. Now, you'll notice that the scissors cutting the film strip is large. All right. So... I want to make that a little bit smaller, actually quite a bit smaller. All right, so I select its layer. And over here I have a tool, it's called the scale tool. And I select it, select that, and you'll see how it changed here. So now I have two ways of doing this. I can drag this and change it like that, 
or I can change its values directly here. And I can maintain the aspect ratio here. All right, so if I select it and they're separate, then that means that I can change the height without changing the width to match it, to keep the original aspect ratio. All right, so I'll select that because I don't want to distort it or stretch it out or anything like that. And I'm going to shrink this down to about like that. Hit scale, and there we go. Now I'm going to click the move tool, select it, and move it up here. Now for this one. Now this one is a bit smaller than I want it to be. So I'm going to again select the scale tool. Now here's something about GIMP. Say I selected this. It's a little bit non-intuitive. See how I, I clicked on that, but yet this one is the one that got selected? That's because over here, that's what's selected. That's how GIMP does it. All right, it, I wish it didn't do it that way, but it does. So what you want to do is make sure you have that layer selected. Like that, you see a little selection. Now when I select it, it's selected. And I can just go ahead and grab that, stretch it out a little bit, stretch that out a little bit, hit scale, now move it over here. Alright, now I might, eh, let's move it over a little bit more. Now I want to show you something that I just did by mistake. You see I clicked and I'm holding it, but I didn't actually select that layer. I selected the background layer. I do that I don't know how many times. Very annoying. So I let it go, hit Control Z, and click on it. Make sure that I have it selected. Now move it over a little bit here. All right, like that. Okay, now in my mind I had an idea that I wanted to implement for this thumbnail. So we've got that over here, we've got this over here. Pretty simple so far. Like I said, I'm not a graphic artist, not a layout designer, anything like that. Just putting some stuff up, strictly amateur. So let's go back to the internet. Now I have two places that I go to create the text that you see. All right, here's one, Cool Text Graphics. The link will be in the description. You have a bunch of these. You'll see some that I used before. This one is a favorite of mine. I also like to use this one. Each one of these can be customized. Some of them cannot. You know, they are themed. But like this one I know and this one I know, you can change the color, you can change the shadowing, uh, what have you. All right? And you've got quite a few that you can select here. So go here, see which ones you might like, and have yourself a ball. And you can just select it, generate it, save it, and then import it into GIMP. That's what we're going to do. Uh, but for this, I'm going to go over here to my other one, Logo Design. Okay? And this one, it works exactly the same as the other one, but it has different sets of logos, and they are more cohesive, I would say. Uh, for example, say I had a three line logo I wanted to create. Well, on Cool Text Graphics, I can do that, but then I have to center everything myself. Each line is independent of the other lines. And you might want that. Or you may want to just create each line separately, import them as a separate graphic, and then arrange them yourself on your graphic in GIMP. But over here, whichever one I select, I can do multi like this, and it will automatically center it for me, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so you can see some of them here. Now, you're not seeing all of their logos, okay, on this first page. To see their logos, you go up here, click logos, and now you're seeing all their logos. See, like this one? And some of these you didn't see on that first page. And they have quite a few. Well, I like this one. 
and I've used it before so let's edit that one and I'm gonna say behind the scenes okay pretty straightforward now I can change the font size and I'm gonna change the font size to be larger and a little word on this when you are creating graphics and if you know that you're gonna want to change the size of it you know maybe uh, shrink it down then you want to make the original graphic larger you never want to resize your graphic larger than it originally was because that's when it looks distorted all right so I know I'm gonna shrink this down some so I made sure that it's larger than I know I'm gonna need it that way it'll look decent now I could do this and then stretch it in GIMP but I don't recommend that because it does not look good alright so we'll do this and another word this line here when you cross this line show you you now turned your logo see it there in the upper right hand corner you now turned your logo to premium so it's no longer free at this point point. and you'll see here see the background now it's gonna watermark it and do all that good stuff okay so put it back over there now it's free so I can come over here to the logo tab and I can change the color of this now I'm gonna keep it here because I like that color uh, for what I'm doing here I can change the outline uh, size here see what that looks like see it made it a little bit thicker alright outline size 2 um, see you got some uh, advanced options here I usually do not touch those alright and now the shadow you see the little shadow behind it it's drop shadow that's the default uh, take a look at what reflection looks like see uh, glow and that looks like normal and there you go and self so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it to drop they look very similar to me self and drop and really when I import it and we have a white background it's probably not gonna show up unless I want to change the color of the shadow so since I know it's gonna be a white background let's uh, do this a little bit don't know if that'll make a huge difference but we'll see alright so now click done see nice and big and I'll click on it and it's automatically saving it to my download directory alright so now I'm going over here navigating to my download directory locating that image drag and drop boom alright now you see the background is white because I forgot to change the background even though I was talking about it or thinking about it really alright so let me undo that let's go back here still up hit back go to background and change it transparent alright and it sometimes lags when it uh, has to update uh, so let me go through make sure everything yep still the same okay so let's click done save it drag and drop it and there you go that gives me a lot more flexibility to place this wherever I want so I could place it like this okay or I could place it like this you know so I can do this if I want to right about there and that's cut off so I might want to move this behind that one you do that by clicking dragging and dropping this so that it's underneath the layer that you want it to be behind okay so see that that one made it behind that one go one more now it's behind that one alright now if I want this one 
to be above it or behind it like that. I can click that, bring it down like this. So now it's in between the two. But I don't like the way that looks right there. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see where are you? Select that. And let's make it a little bit smaller like that. Okay. And then we can move that one a little bit over here. And voila. This will be my thumbnail. All right. So all I need to do at this point is export it, save it, and use it in my videos. All right. So it's just that easy. Hopefully this has helped you guys. If you're planning on creating some content or creating your own thumbnails, you can see how easy it is. But that's going to do it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And remember that all the links uh, to the software, the website that I use to GIMP, all of that will be in my description. All right, so you guys have a blessed day.